Hi, this is notes for 17.1, and we're going to parameterize curves. And so what we want to do is try to look at parametric equations, both in 2D and 3D, and then try to work with them. So let's start off with one that we've done before. We want to write a parametric equation for something that's in the xy plane, y equals x squared. So the simple way to do that is to let one of the parameters equal just t. And then the y would be equal to t squared. And so all I'm doing is taking t and putting it in there for x, and then I get both equations. That's the easiest way to do it. You can translate this too. So this is t minus 1. And so then y is equal to t minus 1 quantity squared. That will give you the same picture. It's just what is your starting point at t0 that would change. So if I plug in 0, time equal to 0 in both of those, I'm going to get a different starting point. So that's how you can translate the picture a little bit and where you do start. For a circle, we've learned that x is equal to, for instance, 3 cosine t and y is equal to 3 sine of t. We can monkey around with the cosine and sine depending upon your starting point. If it's in this natural orientation that we've used with the unit circle, then our starting point would be, at time 0, would be this uh, mark right here, which is the point 1, 0. And in this case, it would be actually 3, 0 because I'm, I have the 3 coefficient out front, the amplitude. So this is what the graph would look like in the xy plane. What if we want to move it over to the xyz plane? Well, if we try z equal to 2, that would give us an elevation of the circle up like this. So it's above the origin by two units if the z-axis is pointed up. Now what happens if we turn z into some sort of variable? Well, if it's some sort of uh, just linear thing here, we can just increment going up like this, and we get some sort of spiral. Spiral will be good for you when you do your roller coaster project at the end. I hope you include one. And on the calculator, what you do is you make sure that you get into 3D mode first. And then you do menu again, and then these options will show up. So you'll have this one and this one. That's how you can graph a parametric equation. So try that and get in there and see if you can do it with your calculator. And this right here is called a helix. Now what if we do lines in two, uh, two dimensions and then maybe see what happens in three dimensions? If I look at this one right here, x equals 2 plus 6t and y equals negative 1 plus 3t question might be, in the xy plane, what kind of graph do we actually have? Well, we can go ahead and solve for the parameter here, t, and if I do that, that would be x minus 2 all over 6. When I do that, I'm going to take that t and I'm going to plug it in for this one. Then I'm going to get y equal to negative 1 plus 3, then my x minus 2 all over 6. If I simplify, then I should get y equals negative 2 plus 1 half x. That's the line that we do have. Now, to get that same line, we can change things around a little bit. If I have this right here, 2 plus, and say, for instance, I double that number, and y equals negative 1 plus, let's double that number. So it's kind of the slope for each one of the respective x and y's. And notice the slope back here. The slope back here for my eventual line is 1 half. How do I get that? Well, really, all I'm taking is this y value and putting it over this x value. So it's kind of the coefficients of t in both of those. Same thing here. If I take this over this, I'm still going to get 1 half. So I have the point 2, negative 1 on both of these curves. And then I also have a slope that's going to be one half on both of them. So really, both this, these sets of equations make the same exact line. It just depends how fast you're going to travel along that line as you go. And I apologize, i got a lot of stuff going on here. But say, for instance, I go t equal to 0 on this one. I'm going to get the point 2, negative 1. If I go t equal to 0 over here, I'm also going to get t, I'm sorry, 2, negative 1. The problem is, or difference is, what happens when t is equal to 1? 
if t is equal to 1 here, plug in 1, I'm going to get 14, and I'm going to get 5. Over here, if I let this t equal to 1 for this equation here, I'm going to get, what's that, 8, and then 2. And so what's happening really is that we are traveling on this line slower than what we're traveling on this line. You can think of it that way. And so it's the same exact line, but just how fast does it take you to get to a certain point? So that leads us to what we're getting into then. The parametric equations of a line through some point. So that's my initial point. Notice that I started with my initial point here. And then it's going to be parallel to this vector. Well, in the direction of that vector. So then the a value is just going to come down here, and the b value is going to come down here, and the c value is going to come down here. And why this is is because this vector in this direction gives you kind of the slope in the x direction, the y direction, and the z direction. And that's what's happening here for each one of these pieces. Now we want to get to what's new for us is the vector form. The vector form does take some vector that is a position vector in the direction of another vector, and notice they call this v, probably for velocity. We'll see how that works out in the next section. But we end up with the direction a, b, and c. Then it has a parametric equation of r is equal to the r naught vector plus t times the v vector which can be also written, if I expand it out, into this vector form right here, where we add in the t there times our velocity vector. Now, why does that relate to what we're doing? Well, if you look right here, this is how we write it in parametric form. If we write it in vector form, we're just going to get, and if I, all I'm going to do is uh, pull out the i's and etc. I'm going to get x naught plus, and so I'm going to end up with a t here, and that's all times my i. So where did I get that? Well, I got it from this piece and then this piece right here. And I'm going to continue that on with the other pieces. So all this down here is saying is that you can either write things in the parametric form that we have right here, or else you can put it in vector form as such. And then there's three different ways kind of to write this thing. So what does this mean right here? If we take this example, describe in words the curve given by the parametric equations x equal to 2t, y equal to 3 minus t, and 4 plus 5t. The first thing you got to realize is that this goes through a point. And so my point on this is going to be 0, 3, and 4. Because I don't have any single number there, a 3 and a 4, I'm going to put all those together. So this is going to be a line through this point in the direction, well, what's my direction vector? Can you read it off of here? Well, the direction is going to be equal to, what do I got? 2i plus negative 1j plus 5k. So I just took that from my coefficients of the t values that I do have here. So that's what it wants to tell me. So in reverse, if I give you a, a point and I give you a direction vector, you should be able to write it in parametric form as such, or vector form. So here it says find the parametric equations through the points that I have here. So I need, first of all, my direction vector. So if I do my direction vector, it's going to be so this is my direction vector, so I went 0, minus negative 1, negative 2, so on. So this is the velocity vector or my direction vector. So now all I have to do is pick one of the points to work with, and then I can find my parametric equations for what I do have. So I'm going to take x is equal to, I'm just going to pick this point, it's going to be negative 1, and then my slope of this thing is going to be 1t. And then my y is going to be the 2 minus 4t. And then my z is equal to the 3 plus t. 
So I'll write this into vector form. All I have to do is take each one of the pieces and multiply it by my unit vectors. So this would be 2 minus 4t, 3 plus t times my k. Now I can factor things out and do everything I want to put it into this form, but I'm okay with this right now. Now this last one talks about time, and it doesn't, maybe, it's maybe not obvious to you that it talks about time, but it says represent the line segment, the segment only, between one point to the next parametrically. And notice that it is the same exact points as what I had up here in the above example. So I do know my direction vector, which is this. But now what I want to do is go from one point to the next. So I'm going to start at one point. Well, let me do it this way. It's going to be exactly what I have up here. And the difference now is that i got to put limits on this because it's just a line segment. So which time do I travel from? Well, you should be able to recognize that time equal to zero is going to give me this initial point. What time will give me this point right here? Well, if I travel one second, this coefficient right here is going to be a zero. So it's going to be one second. If I plug in one here, I'm going to get negative two, which is what I want here. And if I plug in one here, I'm going to get four. So that will give me my segment that I do want. Now the question is, is can I do this a different way? The answer is yes. Can I go faster? Yes, you can. So the question is, is I want to go from 0 to 6 seconds. This is actually slower. It's going to take 6 seconds to get from one point to the next. What am I going to have to do? Well, if we do this, we know that the negative 1, the 2, and the 3 are all going to stay the same because that point is my starting point. I want that at time 0. But now at 6 seconds, I want to hit this next point, 0, negative 2, and 4. So I'm going to have to change my time and my change in time. So this is kind of my initial value plus my change is what I want to deal with. So before, this took 1 second to complete the distance to get to this x-coordinate here at 0. Now I want it to get there in 6 seconds. So what am I going to have to do? Either multiply by 6 or divide by 6. I hope you can see that it's going to be divide by 6. So this would be 1 6 t. And that's what I'm going to do to each one of these. So if I do this, this is going to be 2 minus 4 6 t. Yeah, I can reduce that. And then I'm going to have plus 3 plus 1, 6, t there. Now look at what happens when I put in 6 in here for the t value. Well, it's just going to turn out to be negative 1 plus 1, which gives me my 0. There it's going to be 2 minus 4, which gives me my negative 2. And then there is 3 plus 1, which would give me my 4. So that would give me this point, but it would take 6 seconds. So you have to learn how to manipulate this time, especially with your roller coaster, because each segment's going to be a different time amount that you're going to be rolling on it. All right, I hope this helps for 17.1. We're going to represent vector form and parametrics for equations that we are familiar with, but now moving into 3D. Thanks a lot. Have a great day.